What's up everybody, it's Andrew and welcome to the 19th Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about method overloading and what method overloading is. It's having multiple methods that are called the same name, they have the exact same name, but they take different arguments so they perform different things. So I have our, our the main class and then the overload class, which is going to have the methods that are going to be demonstrating overloading with. So the first method I'm going to have is going to be print. It's going to take an integer, and I'm going to have it perform uh, two. It's going to display two lines. So this one is going to have first print method, and it's also going to have integer plus whatever the argument is that I put in. I'm just going to copy and paste this because I don't want to write that over and over. Now you'll see that I have another print method here and it's saying that it's a duplicate method of print integer. So what we can do is change the argument, the data type. So this, this one will take a double. And then we'll have it display that it is, in fact, the second print method, and that it has a double. So let's do another one, and on this one, we're going to have this one take a string. And we'll just call this text for the argument. And it's going to be the third print method. And then do another one. And we'll have this one take not only one integer, but two. I'll have it take another one. So this will be num1. And then we're just going to copy that. Oh, boy. There we go. And we'll have that display both of our arguments, num1 and num2. And this will be our fourth print method. So we have four methods here. And the first one is going to have, it's going to take an integer for an argument. The second one is going to take a double for an argument. Third one takes a string. And then the fourth one is going to have two integers. Now they're all, they all have the same name. They all are print, they don't return anything, they're all void. But since they take different arguments in the parameters, it's actually like different data types, that's what method overloading is. It's, it's having the same name method over and over. However, the arguments are gonna be different. And I'll demonstrate that here. So first, I'm going to create an object of the overload class instantiate it oh boy overload class and we'll call it object one all right so I have my object here that's what I'm going to use to call the print method and you'll see once I start to write out the print method it gives me these options. One is a double integer string and two integers. So when I put a, a value in here, so I'm going to just do an integer. I'll just do one and call it. What it's going to do, you'll see that it displayed first print method. Integer is one, which is what I passed in. Now how that worked was it went through the methods and then looked for the first one that matched the data type of what we're trying to do. So we have one integer, so it went to print method and then it looked right here and it said this accepts one integer, so we're gonna run this method. And you'll see that first print method is what it says and then int and then num, which is what we put in. So if we did 1.0, which is now a double, it's no longer an integer, and ran the same thing, we're going to see that it has second print method and it has double and then our amount that we put in to the argument. 
and same thing. So what it did was it looked for print and it saw that this one only takes an integer. So what it does is it bypasses that, it overlooks it, and then looks for another print, and this one takes a double. So it used this method. So basically, the argument that you put in has to match exactly what the method takes. So this one takes one double, so that's exactly what we put in, so it ran our second method. Now our third one is a string. So likewise, we could put a quotation there and a quotation there, and now we have a string. Call it, and it's going to use the third print method. So it's going to skip this one, that's an integer, it's going to skip this one, that's a double, and then it's going to say this takes one string, and we are going to run this print method. And you'll notice that it displays third print method, and then our string that we put in, which is text. And then our fourth one here, so we have another example, and this is going to have two integer values. So if we just put five, two, now we are passing in two integers, two whole numbers, and then we run it. And what that's going to do is it's going to go to your print methods, and then it's going to look at what one takes two integers. So it's going to skip this one. That's only one integer. This is a double, so that doesn't count. This is a string. Not looking for that. And then it's going to see that this is integer. Integer, okay, we need two integers. So that's this method. And then we're going to display fourth print method, which is what we did, and then we displayed both of our arguments, which is what we did. So that is basically how method overloading works. You have multiple methods of the exact same name that, have, that take different parameters, that takes different arguments or data types within those methods. And a cool thing is also, is has to do with characters. So, for instance, if we were to put in a character, let's just say capital A, what would happen? I'm not getting an error here. So when I run it, what's going to happen is it's going to go to that first method, which is an integer, and then it's going to display 65. Now the reason for that is, is because characters, or basically anything, it, that our compiler reads, but characters holds a decimal value. It holds a whole number value. And then if you go farther into that, it holds a value of ones and zeros, which is binary. But we're, we want the decimal number because this is what it's displaying. So basically, it's saying that the letter capital A is equivalent to 65. All right, and now to show you, I have this table and this is the ASCII table. And what this does is it gives you the values of what these characters actually are. So you see that we had A, we put in the character A, and we displayed 65. So if we look at capital A, you'll see the decimal value right here is 65. And remember how that works is the compiler sees the character, it doesn't work for strings, but sees the character, capital A, and then immediately turns that into its value that it can understand. Because the, the compiler doesn't see capital A. It doesn't understand capital A like we do. So it will automatically turn it into an integer, and then since it, that, um, that character is now an integer, it will look for a method with a single integer. So likewise, if we were to pick another, so capital I, you'll see is 73. Capital I. And it'll say first print method was 65, and then first print method, 73. So we just ran that again with there. And then same thing, if we call our print method and then have two letters, so we have um, capital I and capital A like that, we're going to send in two. What that's going to read is two integers. So I'll run that, and you'll see down here, it actually went to the fourth print method, which takes two integers, 
and then displayed. 65 and 73. So that's pretty cool. And that's called casting. So it casts the character into an integer. So I hope that helped. That's basically what method overloading is. It's having multiple methods of, with the exact same name. And then what you're going to do is have different data types and, and arguments. And then it calls those methods uh, based on what the parameter is. All right, everybody. I hope that helped. And I will see you in the next Java tutorial.